Hello everyone, this is Dr. Singaram. Welcome to the today's video which will be about conditions of epilepsy with focal seizures. Now whenever we read about epilepsy, we read about conditions characterized by repeated generalized seizures like for example absent seizures and juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. They are relatively common condition which we must have already read. Now I am going to focus on two conditions where you will have a child with epilepsy but here with repeated focal seizures. First of all, what is focal seizure? A condition wherein seizure originates from only some parts of the brain and not all parts of the brain. That is what is called focal seizure. Focal seizures are divided into two further categories. One is focal seizure with preserved awareness. This is the new term for uh, the term called as uh, simple focal seizure. Okay, right? It is simply based on a child being aware at the time of seizure. So this is a new term for simple focal seizure which is called focal seizure with preserved awareness. Second is focal seizure with impaired awareness means child is not conscious at the time of seizure. Previously this type of seizure was called as complex focal seizure but now the new term is focal seizure with impaired awareness. So the first thing you need to know the revised terms for focal seizures. Now the name of the conditions with focal seizures and epilepsy. The most common out of this would be something called BECTS. What is that? It's a benign childhood epilepsy with centrotemporal spikes. As you can see clearly from the name itself, centrotemporal spikes. That is from the central part of the temporal lobes only the seizure originates. Okay, that is why the name itself is like this. It is previously called as Rolandic epilepsy. That was the initial term for this condition. Now it is called benign epilepsy, benign childhood epilepsy with centrotemporal spikes. As the name itself suggests, it is a benign condition. Okay. It usually starts in the childhood, but once they become adolescents and adults, the child will outgrow this condition, meaning child will not have any further seizures. And this is the most common cause of epilepsy condition in children characterized with focal seizure. This is an important, important MCQ point. Okay. Most common epilepsy condition with repeated focal seizure is BECTS. As I have told you, this condition starts in the young childhood typically between 3 to 10 years. That is the time when they usually start. Remember, for your exam purpose, you should know about the age group in which the epilepsy condition occurs. For example, absent seizures typically occur in a school going child. We all know about it. Juvenile myoclonic epilepsy occurs in an adolescent child. Infantile spasm or the West syndrome starts in the infancy and BECT yes, starts between 3 to 10 years of age. And as I told you, these children outgrow the seizures by the time they become adolescents. That is a point. So that is why it's one of the benign condition which you should remember. Now this is a condition which typically is characterized by intact awareness. That is child is able to recollect the events which have happened at the time of seizure. Typically it is something like this. These episodes occur at the night time and it awakens the child from sleep. So what happens? The child may be sleeping and once the seizure starts, the child gets up having a terrified appearance and now they will have some unusual sensation like for example a tingling sensation in the mouth or the throat region. Following that they will have this tonic or clonic contraction involving one side of the face. It's focal right so one side of the face will be affected and along with that they can have drooling of saliva as well. These are the typical manifestations of the seizures in this particular condition. Remember, the child will be otherwise aware and will be able to comprehend the event. So think like this, the next day the child is presenting to the OPD, the child will be able to enumerate the events which have happened last night by themselves because they were aware at the time of seizure. So this is something which you should remember. So it's a focal seizure with intact awareness. Of course, the way by which we make a diagnosis is with the help of EG where you are going to look for spikes. Remember. This is very characteristically uh, described as wide based centrotemporal spikes. That is how it gets the name itself. And this is more observed during sleep. In fact, I told you these seizures typically occur during sleep time and awaken the child from sleep. Okay, so this is how the actual EEG tracing would look like. Can you see that the, the, the box, okay, the black colored one represents the seizure activity or the spikes. It is not everywhere. It is only in one particular area because this is a focal seizure. Not all electrodes are showing the EG activity. Only that particular area is showing because this is a focal seizure. So this is something which you should remember. Important for your exams. Wide based centrotemporal spikes. 
Okay, suppose I do MRI in this particular condition. Are you expecting any abnormality? Absolutely no. MRI will be typically be normal. And remember, this is a benign condition. That's what you need to remember. Now, how are you going to control the seizure in this child? Of course, it's a focal seizure. So for focal seizure, the drug of the choice will be carbamazepine or nowadays what we are using is ox carbamazepine. This is the drug of choice in this particular condition. Okay, so that is about the first epilepsy condition with focal seizure called BECTS. Okay, next condition is something called as mesial temporal lobe sclerosis. Now, the peculiarity of this particular condition is that it occurs as febrile seizures in childhood usually noted in child who is having recurrent febrile seizure. So this is often preceded by repeated febrile seizures in the childhood. That is the first point to be noted. But some cases can have a genetic origin also, uh, namely a suco gene has been implied in this condition. Can be a potential question for you in the upcoming exam. So you should know about this. Suco gene mutation can be implied in mesial temporal lobe sclerosis. Now talking about the area affected, okay, it's of course the temporal lobe. But the most common area affected is the hippocampus. There is usually atrophy or gliosis of the hippocampus. The second commonest area to be affected after hippocampus is amygdala. Okay. Why you should know the name of the areas affected in this epilepsy? Because this is a condition which is surgically treatable. Very, very important point. In fact, this is the most important MCQ point in this particular condition. This is the most common cause of surgically remediable epilepsy condition in adolescent and adults. So this is an important, important MCQ question possible in your upcoming exams. Okay. So that is about this particular condition of mesial temporal lobe sclerosis. So two important, important MCQ points which I wanted to convey from this short lecture is number one, the most common epilepsy with focal seizure would be benign epilepsy with centrotemporal spikes and the most common surgically treatable epilepsy with focal seizure is mesial temporal lobe sclerosis. So that is for the today's video. I hope you have liked it and you have gained some information out of this. Please share it with your friends and do subscribe to the channels to get notified about the upcoming videos. Thank you.